Hey, this is Horner, and we're going to look at 1994B1. Uh, this is a pretty easy problem. Uh, it seems a little difficult at first because they tell you that you have a ball that you kick at 20 meters per second at an angle of 37 degrees. And the ball comes up, and it's going to do one of a couple of different things. It's either going to come up and come back down and hit the fence, or it's got enough speed it's going to come up and go totally over the fence and then land on the other side. So there's some things that we need to figure out. The first time, the first thing that we need to do is find the time that it takes for the uh, ball to reach the plane of the fence. Please notice here that air resi resistance is negligible, so we don't have to worry about air resistance at all. Um, we have a distance in the x to the fence, and that's equal to 32 meters. And if we remember, velocity in the x is equal to distance in the x divided by time. So our time is equal to distance in the x divided by the velocity in the x. We have a velocity that's both in the x and the y. So let's go ahead and make a triangle out of this. And we want to find out what is the velocity in the x. And that's, oops, that's the y. We want to find the velocity in the y and the uh, x. So this is velocity in the x on this side. This would be velocity in the y. So velocity in the x is equal to our original velocity times, notice it's the adjacent side, so it'll be the cosine of 37 degrees. Um, now we can go ahead and solve. So let's go ahead and take our original velocity. So I'm going to move everything down here. Original velocity is 20. Take that times the cosine of 37. So at this point, we're really just taking 20, and we're multiplying it times point, uh, point 0.8, which is the cosine. So 20 times 0.8, and that gives us 16 meters per second. So that gives us um, that gives us 16 meters per second. So now we can say here this is 16 meters per second, and at this point we can say the time now is equal to the distance, which is 32, divided by 16, and so our time is two seconds. So we know at this point the time is 2.0 seconds. So that is our answer for this part. Will the ball hit the fence? If so, how far below the top of the fence will it hit, or how high above will it hit? Uh, really, all we need to do now is just figure out what is the height at 2 seconds. So we can use our equation for everything in the y direction now. First thing that we'll do is we will say that, uh, if you remember, um, in the y, the distance in the y is equal to v in the y times t uh, plus 1 half g t squared. And because gravity is going down and the ball is going up, we'll have to make gravity negative, but we'll come back to that. We want to try to solve for d. But the first thing we need is the velocity in the y. And remember, it's not 20. It's got to be this side of the triangle. So it's actually 20 times the sine of 37. So that would be equal to 20 times 0.6. And they even give you what the trig functions are, which is really nice. And so that would give us a speed of, um, that would give us a speed somewhere around one, uh, about 12 meters per second. So this is 12 meters per second. Our time is 2 seconds plus 0.5 times 10 times 2 squared, which is 4. So if you do all that math, you should end up with an answer of about 4 meters. So we know that above the fence, we're traveling, and we get about 4 meters. And so let's figure out exactly how high above the fence we are. So this will be 4 minus 2.5. Uh, this would be 5, and then this would be 1. So it would be 1.5 meters above. So the answer to this one is, it no, it will not hit the fence. How far above the fence will it be? 1.5 meters. Uh, the next part of this problem is to go through and just plot the horizontal and vertical components of the speed. We said that uh, before 16 was the horizontal component, and we really only want to get it here until the ball reaches the plane of the fence. So we don't want to go anything over here. So no graphing on this side. We only want to go up to that two-second point. So it's 16 all the way across. Doing the y is a little bit different. Uh, what we've got to do first is we need to figure out the total time that the ball's in the air. So let's do that first. Uh, to find the total time the ball's in the air, we're going to put this vector back in. We said that this was approximately 12 
meters per second because we did 20 times the sine of 37, so it's 20 times 0.6, and that'll give you 12 meters per second. That is the speed right here going up. The speed coming back down on the other side of the fence in this direction will be negative 12, and we know that gravity is equal to negative 10. So let's use an equation to figure out the time. So we're going to say the final speed in the y is equal to the original speed in the y um, plus gravity times time. Our final speed in the y is negative 12. That's equal to our original speed in the y, which is 12. So here's our original speed plus negative 10 times time. So 12 and 12 would be 24, so that's negative 24 is equal to negative 10 times t. And so we see that the ball is in the air for a total of 2.4 seconds. And that's going to be important for our bottom graph, and here's why. We know that the speed in the y direction starts out at 12. And we know that it's got to be 0 at half of the speed. So we're going to divide it by 2. That gives me 1.2. Because remember, this is equal. So right down the middle, this would be 1.2 seconds to go up and 1.2 seconds to go down. And at this point, we know our speed in the y direction is equal to 0. So at 1.2, we can put our speed at 0. And now at this point, we're going to draw a really straight line all the way across and stop it too because remember it says until the ball reaches the plane of the fence and now we are finished with this problem